Hello and welcome to New Filmmakers Los Angeles in partnership with Movie Maker Magazine. My name is Danny DeLillo and we're here at the Cambridge Los Angeles showroom in West Hollywood and I'm here with writer-director Carl Shefferman with his movie Looking for the Jackalope. Let's take a look at a clip. Okay, George, this is your chance. Everything you've been through in the last 24 hours has led you to this very moment. Don't fuck it up. Carl, it's a pleasure to have you here in the studio and thank you so much for, for sharing your amazing film. Uh, My pleasure. For those that haven't seen it, tell us a brief synopsis. Um, it's a cautionary tale about a disenchanted New York writer mm -hmm. who um, gets a surprise phone call from his old college girlfriend inviting him to their college reunion. And he had hitchhiked with her 20 years before from college to New York. Mm -hmm. um, so he decides to go and he misses his plane and embarks on a cathartic hitchhiking journey to his reunion. And once he's there, he makes an attempt to reunite and rekindle his romance mm -hmm. with his old girlfriend. Mm -hmm. Uh, only to meet his own worst demon in the form of a talking jackalope who teaches him a powerful lesson about living in the past. Where did the inspiration come for you for, for making this particular film? It was uh, quite autobiographical. Mm -hmm. um, it's a story I had uh, for many years. I actually did hitchhike from gra after graduation from Kenyon College to New York wow. with a girlfriend. Um, and then returning to a reunion, I tried to hitchhike back after I missed, actually missed my plane and wow. had this ridiculous misadventure and finally got there and had my reunion. But I basically took those stories and a bunch of characters that are real in my life, mm -hmm. multiple girlfriends, not, not to brag, but um, <laughs> a few yeah. different characters and friends and mushed them together into one character. Yeah. And, uh, Highly, highly embellish, the, mm -hmm. you know, raise the stakes uh, yeah. to protect the innocent. Yeah. And, um, you know, there may be some people out there that uh, recognize some of the story. Maybe yeah. Not. That's um, okay. But, you know, it, it, it took me a long time to get this kind of story that was in my head yeah. out and, and into uh, bringing in other characters to mm -hmm. dramatize what's going on with the main character. So it yeah. took a while to write the script, uh, put it on the shelf for a while. Mm -hmm. And then uh, uh, my wife, I was talking to her about it, and she said, why don't you make this thing? And I decided maybe I should stop talking about it and just make the movie. Yeah, and you so. did. And I'm so pleased that you did. Thank um, you. You had a terrific cast. Like I almost couldn't imagine anybody else playing those parts. Like it was just they were just so on it for every single emotion. And obviously, particularly the lead has to go through an incredible amount of emotions and distress and excitement and, and everything else. And already his character's going for a lot anyway. Right. Um, how did you come about bringing that cast together? Because they just work so well. I had sort of a type in mind for Jordan, the main character. And I just happened to run into Michael Lydon Campbell, my mm -hmm. lead actor, mm -hmm. in New York uh, in, a, in a Starbucks. And uh, I'm plugging Starbucks now. <laughs> um, right near my apartment. Then Michael, uh, I needed a good Dr. Jim, his best buddy in the movie. And Michael recruited Larry Clark, who's Brilliant. a great L.A. veteran a actor. Yeah. Nice long IMDb list. Yeah. And, um, and then uh, I found uh, the lead female character in New mm -hmm. York uh, through an actor's group. Mm -hmm. uh, and wow. then the rest, the rest of the film primarily was local Ohio actors where I shot a good portion of the film. We've had so many films in the last 10 years mm -hmm. of, you know, in feature films. Mm -hmm. And I don't quite, I don't think I've ever seen so many locations in an independent <laughs> film ever. And not just locations, no, but... But just the most, you know, from, I mean, hospitals to diners to, you know, to, to I mean, it was just so many. I couldn't yeah. believe it. I was like, wow, this is really amazing. So how was that journey for you, you know, trying to scout these places? Did you have places in mind prior or, or how did that work? So I had to figure out how do I, where do I 
make the cutoff? Do we shoot a little bit in New Jersey? When do we cut to mm-hmm. Ohio, even mm-hmm. though it maybe it's supposed to be New Jersey? Mm-hmm. I had a wonderful producer uh, from also Mount Vernon, Ohio, mm-hmm. near Kenyon College, uh, Matt Starr, mm-hmm. who uh, has his own video company and was basically sort of a county mayor, if you oh, will, wow. of, the, of <laughs> Knox County and knew the sheriff's department, which came in very handy for the very road good. stuff. The highway patrolman knew the locations, knew where to get me 18-wheeler trucks wow. to drive back and forth numerous times. Um, pulled together amazing, amazing locations. Knew the churches, knew the diners. Because there was so many. Without yeah. him, oh uh, I could not have made the film. What do you think it is about that we love so much about seeing these these films that go on these epic journeys? Because we just... We just get so enthralled in the characters and everything else, but it really is something really joyful to watch, isn't it? To sort of watch people go through that. I think that is a metaphor for the human experience. Mm. I mean, that is life. Um, Life can literally have chapters. Mm -hmm. Uh, Life has um, three acts, Mm -hmm. as far as I'm concerned, just like a screenplay. Mm -hmm. Life takes you on a journey, and Mm -hmm. you meet all different people in different parts of your life. I mean, look at the Odyssey by Homer. Yeah. Yeah. It is the model... Uh, journey film exactly, or journey yeah. story and you know you can't help making a journey film without some yeah. reference to the odyssey and sure enough there is uh, the one character reading the book on the train the girl yeah um and it's for me that's that's the human experience yeah, yeah. absolutely yeah. i think it's and it's and I, and I like uh the films i like to make um are fictional realities mm-hmm. i i like to create a world you know mm-hmm. joseph campbell uh, wrote the great book, The Hero's Journey, which mm. which talks about this kind of world, the the world of story. Yeah, and um, I like that kind of journey of yeah. a, of a hero, whether he's uh, super powerful or mm-hmm. vulnerable and and you know victimized. It's yeah. still a hero. Yeah. Um, what would you? I mean, this is a big question when you're making an independent feature film. But what was your biggest challenge in making it? Without a doubt, raising the money. Yeah, I'm sure. And, and, and breaking that inertia of have, sitting there with a script in your lap. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we get, we write scripts, we think we're going to get to a studio or to, you know, some big actor, star mm-hmm. or something, and, and, and basically get the green light and get mm-hmm. the funding. But for most of us, it doesn't work that way. And mm-hmm. so you, you know, you write a film, hopefully, that's doable, which mm-hmm. I, I would say mine was marginal uh, for the budget I had. Mm-hmm. Um, but... It, Francis Ford Coppola once said, start shooting and they will come. So I was like, I'm not sitting here with a script waiting on $200,000 or mm-hmm. two hundred fifty dollars or whatever it is I need to include the marketing budget and all that. I'm not going to wait for that. I'm going to raise a little money, 50 grand, mm-hmm. crowdfunding, mm-hmm. shoot all the stuff in New York, mm-hmm. you know, and then shut down, raise some more money, maybe try to get a couple of small investors, mm-hmm. do another crowdfunding campaign, which mm-hmm. is... That is the most torturous oh, process goodness, I, know. It's horrible. I know of. It's yeah. You're basically annoying all your friends, family, and associates uh, for, mm. for many months. And, yeah, it's uh, hard, it's, isn't it? It's really tough because you're, you're asking people to give you money. But the greatness is, is that you made it anyway. I did. And, and that's wonderful. Um, what's, then, what's it like? I mean, you said you never started to be a writer. It's also your personal story. You ended up making it. Mm-hmm. What is it nice to, you know... On the other side of the country, you know, for be recognized by New Filmmakers LA and have your film selected. What's that feeling like when your film has been selected and you're just, it, what is that like? You know, it's it's the pat on, on the back we all need. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's 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 tough out there, and you know, you you obviously want to get into Sundance or mm-hmm. Cannes or whatever, mm-hmm. but you know, being realistic, uh, a, f- a little film like this with no major stars, mm-hmm. um, there's plenty of other festivals out there mm-hmm. and 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 festivals that work really really hard for you like this one mm-hmm. and um, you know you just got to keep putting it out there and putting it out there mm-hmm. and, and when you get a bite you go with it you mm-hmm. know it's it's uh, it's a great thrill and and um, obviously LA is full is, of industry yeah. folks and you hope you get uh, some agent attention or That's maybe right. uh, d- you know uh, a directing gig or something mm-hmm. um, you know that's all that's well, you certainly, the, you certainly is. Have, I want to see much more of your work. Um, what's what is next for the film? What is next? Are we get where are we going to be seeing it soon, or is there? Well, a we can watch I have um, 
a f- quite a few more festivals mm-hmm. that I'm waiting to hear from. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've had rejections. Mm-hmm. You know, you get rejected, but uh, there's still some more out there. Mm-hmm. Um, but I actually already have talked to uh, an independent distributor. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess they're called an aggregate mm-hmm. distributor, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. and that's basically the the place where most of these kind of films are going to end up is yeah. is on VOD on Hulu, on Amazon, on on uh, Netflix is yeah. always nice. Yes, maybe a, thea- uh, a, a four-wall theatrical release mm-hmm. would be nice, and actually this company does that for Great. a small price. Um, and they said with that, you get a review from LA Times and all that. Fantastic. But, um, you know, I would say a few more festivals, and then hopefully, you know, by the end of the summer, I'll, I'll have it online, and, and then I'm going to be uh, heavily, heavily social, you know, uh, promoting on social media mm-hmm. uh, so I can you know make a little money back I'm not gonna make a lot of money but well, well marketing yeah. is everything as you can yeah. see on the t-shirt uh, yes. there you go. Uh, go go and is there a website we can kind of keep up there today? is yes. um, the website uh, is www.lookingforthejackalope.com mm-hmm. um, it's got all s- sorts of stuff about the film mm-hmm. uh, my wife actually created the the, uh, the website well thank, thank you. you Ellen thank and, you Ellen. Uh, it's got everything. It's got the backstory, the mm-hmm. synopsis. It's got a little uh, silly video of the making of that I shot mm-hmm. on my iPhone. I didn't have a budget to hire a, a, a elect, what do you call it, EPK? EPK, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> so uh, I shot stuff on my cell phone and mm-hmm. edited that together. Brilliant. Uh, and, a, and a trailer. Um, well, you and, made it, and honestly, I think it's one of the biggest and most amazing things when you can make a feature, and, and independent, an independent feature, and create what you've done and I really want the world to see the film because I thoroughly enjoyed it it was well, brilliant thank you. and thank, thank you. you for coming I would, from I New actually York would too. like to add a little of little course background. please do um, I, I did the film school route mm-hmm. uh, I went to NYU grad film school and I made a very good short film back mm-hmm. in the 90s and I came out here and uh, you know I screened it for the DGA because mm-hmm. it was an award-winning film and I took a lot of meetings but I didn't have I was very young and I didn't have my next project. Mm-hmm. That's all changed now and I'm back. But um, in the interim, I made some short films, but my best training really was working as a storyboard artist professionally mm-hmm. um, for some of the best directors in the world. Um, Jonathan Demme, uh, rest in peace, mm. uh, was actually my first, my first break was on Silence of the Lambs doing storyboards for Jonathan Demme. Uh, that that um, that tiny tiny Oscar winning film. Yes, yeah, and yeah. then uh, Francis Coppola hired me to do some conceptual illustrations for wow. a movie he was working on. Uh, Ridley Scott, um, Martin Scorsese. So uh, I'm just like, what? I'm dropping, I'm like, what are these names? I'm like, I'm, this is great. I'm dropping names, no, but it's you fantastic. know, these are all my idols, and it's, brilliant. Uh, it's been the best training, better than film school. Mm. And uh, you know, now is my time, and I'm. Not that's gonna amazing. give up until I die. So. Well, you've learned you've learned from the best, and I think yeah. that's really truly wonderful advice. You know, given your journey and what you just experienced and what you said, you know, what what one piece of advice would you would you give out to filmmakers out there that are just you know either wanting pursuing? You, I would say the most important thing is come up with some stories. Know mm-hmm. what you want to make films about and start writing those down. Whether mm-hmm. you work with a writer or you find a script that's like that or you write it yourself, mm-hmm. you've got to have material. Mm-hmm. Um, you can also obviously work in the industry if mm-hmm. you have a trade like I did storyboards, mm-hmm. but they're gonna want you to do that mm-hmm. and not necessarily hear about how you want to be a director. Mm-hmm. So work on those stories, shoot some little films. You mm-hmm. don't have to go to film school. Mm-hmm. You just need a bunch of good friends and yep. uh, you know get some favors and start making films yeah and assess whether you're good or not I mean it sounds yeah. silly but nice. if you know it's a it's a combination of really having some talent being good mm-hmm. and wanting it so bad yeah that you will not stop so um, that's so that's, that's amazing it. advice I'm yep. gonna go off on my day and take that myself okay so thank you very much Carl it's a right. pleasure thank, thank you, you so much for your film and we're so looking forward to seeing it uh, being released and seeing much more of your work as well so thank you thank you appreciate so much it. thank you appreciate Carl. it